Um, so you can come to a nice comfortable seated position just to come into your breath or if you'd like to start laying down you can also do that as well. If you need a pillow to put underneath your hips to get your hips higher than your knees that properly stacks the spine and if you're laying down the feet just naturally splay open your arms are down along your sides the palms can be facing up or down or you can place one hand on your stomach and one hand on your heart and that hand cue can be for anyone whether you're seated upright just like I am or if you're laying down and just taking this time Come into your breath, thanking yourself for tuning in. Maybe you're here to, to work out. Maybe you're here to feel something different in your body. Maybe you're just here to listen. Whatever the reason, you're here now, and I thank you for that. It's always nice to see all of your lovely names pop up on the screen, and I miss you all very much. So thank you for joining me. And once again, if you have any questions or if you have a specific area of the body that you would like worked this evening, you can drop that in the comment section and hopefully I'm able to see that. So taking these first few minutes to come into your breath, you're inhaling deeply through the nose and exhaling also through the nose. As you inhale, you feel the belly fill with breath. And as you exhale, the belly button draws in toward the spine, almost a little bit of ab activation there as you push that breath out through your nose. Inhale deeply, filling the belly with breath. And exhale out the nose again. Taking a couple more minutes in this stillness, noticing areas in your body that are holding tension. And as you exhale through the nose, bring a little bit of softness to those areas. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. You may notice that they actually physically fall away. Thanking yourself for tuning in. I'm certainly thanking you. Together, take a deep belly breath in. And a long exhale out the mouth, a sigh. You can make that nice and audible. Again, deep belly breath through the nose. And exhale. Wonderful. You can go ahead and take the cushion out from underneath your hips. If you're sitting on one, if you're laying down, go ahead and everyone come up to stand. So we're all going to be standing nice and tall. Your hands come down to your sides. Your palms press forward toward your device or toward the top of your mat. Wherever you're facing, your palms face toward that direction as well. You're going to be spreading those fingers, really sending energy out through all ten fingers. Arms are fully extended. Fingers are nice and spread. It's called Tadasana Mountain Pose. Just feeling tall and strong for a moment. On your next inhale, go ahead and lift those arms up to frame the head. And then exhale, bring them right back down. Inhale, lift the arms up to frame the head. And exhale, bring the arms down. So you'll notice that I am doing this little bit of movement here just to show you specifically that how spread and active your hands should be. So you're inhaling up, maybe like making a little ball of energy above you. And then exhale, release, hands come down to your sides. And as you're doing this motion, if your hands are not energized, if you just have nice slack fingers, your fingers may even be touching, and as you're doing this, you might feel it a little bit in your shoulders, maybe a little in your forearms. If you really activate those hands and spread all 10 fingers and then continue to do that with full active arms, you are activating the forearms, you are activating the biceps and the triceps. The deltoids are getting up into the trapezius, which is the tops of the shoulders, the back of the neck, and the upper, the upper back as well. So it just activates so many more muscle groups when you send that energy and fully have activated arms, okay? That's another reason that we flex our feet. So another way to feel something different in your body is to practice going from relaxed hands 
two energized hands. So as you're doing this movement, inhaling the arms up to frame the head, notice how my hands are kind of relaxed this time, and then exhaling them down. And on the next inhale, spread those fingers really, really wide, send that energy out, and then exhale, bring it back down nice and slow. It's a very controlled movement, and just see where you're feeling that in your body differently. I know for me, as soon as I liven up my hands, the tops of my shoulders light right up. So that's a really nice thing to be able to feel, to know that I'm actually getting a stretch and I'm actually feeling that difference by having my arms fully activated. Muscles pull, they never push. So going through this a couple more times, imagining the tops of your shoulders being your deltoids and your trapezius, your deltoids right over top, and then the trapezius is the tops of the shoulders up into the neck and the upper back. So those are getting smaller and they're constricting, which then lifts the whole arm up, right? And then exhale, bring it back down. After that final exhale, just kind of shimmy it out. Maybe go through some nice shoulder rolls, going through some mindful movement, really just getting into the body. So through this mindful movement, I invite you to close your eyes and really feel the sensations that are happening within your body. And notice where the breath is. If you stopped breathing, maybe because something feels uncomfortable, or if you're just so engrossed in paying attention to this movement, just remember to breathe. So maybe trying to link breath to movement, you inhale as the shoulders come up, and then exhale down the back. Inhale up. Exhale down. Go ahead and take them forward in that circular motion. One more time, inhaling up and exhale, rounding down. Maybe try to do one at a time, maybe even taking the arm in a full circular motion. Once again, nice spread active hands. So you can make that, and they can be really tiny circles if you want like super duper tiny, or they can be really, really big motions, right? So going through, going backwards at first, if you're going forwards, don't worry about it. And then reversing and going in the opposite direction. And coming back to stillness, going into the left side this time, or if you did the left first, then you're gonna do the right. The opposite arm going in those giant circles or in those super tiny circles. Just making sure that the arm is fully extended, the hand is flexed, fingers are spread. Sorry, I shouldn't use the word flexed. Flex is, flex would be like this. So, and going forward two more times. One, two, and as it comes back forward in front of you, then you reverse, inhaling back up, exhaling back down, inhaling up, exhaling back down, closing your eyes if they aren't closed already, and just feeling these sensations move throughout your body, noticing where it's pulling. For me, this is going right down into my bicep because I did a bunch of raking today in the yard, so I'm feeling that right down my arm getting some snap, crackle, pops. Those are totally normal. So all of these motions that we've been doing with this circumduction, that's what this motion is called. So on your next roundabout, go ahead and bring that arm back to stillness. So now you're just standing back at the top. You can shimmy a little bit if you want. Um, so all of these uh, motions, these circular motions with the shoulders that we've been doing to warm up that shoulder joint is... Um, they're all, um, they're, they're all using the rotator cuff muscles. So that's kind of what I wanted to focus on a little bit. I know that last week we also did a lot of shoulder opening, but that was kind of in between the shoulder blades on the upper back. So getting into the front, if anyone ever wakes up with uh, pain in the front of their shoulder or in the armpit, um, even um, like just deep within the chest um, or the tops of the shoulders, those could all be indicators of trigger points or just super tight muscular structures that are within that rotator cuff muscle group. And there's four to five, four or five uh, muscles in the rotator cuff group. So that rotator cuff muscle group, go ahead and keep shimmying if you haven't stopped already. And you're just kind of loosening up the upper spine. 
and a little bit of the neck. Go ahead and take your right hand with your left hand and reach the right arm forward. Fingertips come down. So you're stretching the front of the wrist. Breathe deeply. You really don't have to pull very deeply at all. This is already a very intense stretch. If your hand is only going to there, don't force it and press. Some people are much more flexible than others. Just stretching out that wrist joint. And as you release that, you slowly come out, shake that right wrist out, taking the left and then extending the fingers away from the body by pulling them down toward the ground. So the fingers are pointing toward the ground. Slowly releasing that and then shaking that back out again. Wonderful. Okay, everyone can go ahead and come to child's pose. In your child's pose, your knees come wide on the mat. So you're going to go from a tabletop position. So the wrists are stacked under the shoulders, the knees are under the hips. You're going to take the knees wide to the edges of the mat, bring the big toes to touch, and then send the hips back over the ankles. The arms are out long to frame the head with the fingertips or the whole hand against the mat. And this is your child's pose. This is a wonderful way to get into the hips and the shoulders. Taking a couple of nice deep breaths here. Your forehead can either be on a block or on a pillow or on the ground. Surrendering to the earth, reconnecting. The arms are up framing the head in this child's pose position. As you breathe in through the nose, maybe you feel the belly expand. Touch the, touching the tops of the thighs. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're just inhaling deeply and feeling the whole belly like a big balloon. And then exhale, drawing that navel in toward the spine. So from this child's pose, I'd like you to pull yourself up into a couple of circular movements. And those circular movements, you're going to just pull yourself forward Bring it around and then send the hips right back. So you're coming in, bending into the elbows, bringing the chest forward, almost into a tabletop position with wide knees. And then you exhale and push the hips back over the ankles. Inhale, pull up and go around. Exhale, extend the arms, send the hips back. Inhale, pull and bend the arms, bringing the chest forward. And then extend the arms, sending the hips back on the exhale. Do this for two more rounds of breath, inhaling forward, and then exhale, extending and sending the hips back. And then after that second exhale, you can go ahead and on the next inhale, you're going to reverse and go the other way. So you bend the arms in, come forward, exhale, send the hips back, going in the opposite direction. Yeah? So getting a little bit into the hips as well as the shoulders here, really making sure those hands are very active, pressed into the mat. Make sure that this index knuckle and this uh, thumb side have just as much weight as the pinky side, and that takes some of the pressure and the discomfort off of the bottom of the wrist where the palm meets the wrist. So once again, really, really active hands here, pulling forward, making a circle with your whole trunk of your body, extending the arms on the exhale, sending the hips back over the ankles. Beautiful. Coming back up to neutral, and then extending the arms, send the hips back, coming back into a regular child's pose. Go ahead and allow the forehead to, to reach the mat or your block. We'll get into some deeper shoulder joint stretches here. So this is gonna be called thread the needle. For thread the needle, You're in this child's pose position. Your arms are extended long. You inhale the right arm up to the ceiling and then thread it underneath the left armpit, bringing the right cheek to the mat. And as you're breathing here, pouring that weight into the uh, right shoulder joint, your right cheek is against the mat. You can lift your hips to pour more weight into that right shoulder joint. Or you can take the left hand, which is still out long at the top of your mat, and you can push the right hand right into it.
Go ahead and close your eyes here if they aren't closed already. Breathe into that right shoulder joint. Really loosening them up here this morning, this afternoon, this evening, excuse me. On an inhale, release both hands, bring them both out long, back at the top of your mat. Relax the forehead to the mat. And then on your next inhale, you're going to sweep the left arm all the way up to the ceiling, look up, and then exhale. Bring the, the left arm underneath the right armpit, take the left cheek to the mat, and begin to breathe here. So not only are you stretching out the deltoid, which we just talked about, the deltoid is actually in charge of that circumduction motion that we spoke about um, when we were doing the big shoulder circles and everything like that. So the deltoid starts about here, and then it comes over and then connects to the top of, or the outside of the, um, the upper humerus, which is a bone in the arm. And by stretching that, you're getting into any, um, if you've been doing a lot of like cleaning out and moving, lifting of heavy things, any kind of yard work, um, anything that requires a little bit of heavy lifting, that you're using those muscles. So this is a wonderful stretch to do after a long day of yard work or cleaning house. It's called thread the needle. So you're in this lovely position with the left arm underneath the right armpit. Your left cheek is to the mat. You can lift your hips to pour more weight into that outer deltoid, into all those fibers, stretching into the rotator cuff, the back of the rotator cuff, even stretching as far as the rhomboids, which are right up against the spine. So that entire back of the shoulder joint up into your wing area, serratus anterior, some pecs. To come out of this on an inhale, take the left arm back out, take it long to the top of the mat with the right arm. Go ahead and start to, on an inhale, pull yourself back up to hands and knees. You're going to bring the knees back under the hips. You're back in a tabletop position. Instead of staring directly in between both of your hands, take the, um, take the gaze a couple of inches out in front of your fingertips, okay? And that allows for neutral neck alignment. So from here, you're going to tuck your toes, lift your hips, send them on back, coming into your first down dog of the practice. Hi, Jason. How are you? So it could be your first down dog of the day, could be your 15th, whatever it is. Just noticing exactly where you're feeling that in your body right now, the back of the legs, the inner thighs, the back of the ankles and the calves. We'll definitely get a very, very deep stretch here. You can bend your knees, pedal your feet out, nod the head yes, shake it no to get into the back of the neck. On an inhale, lift between your hands, and then glide forward to upper push-up position, stacking the shoulders over the wrists and stacking the heel over the toe. So instead of the heel being super far back, like this is your heel, these are your toes, you really want to stack them directly over. Definitely makes it a little bit of a balance pose from there. And then, if, so if you needed to um, extend the distance between your hands and your feet here, this is why we're doing this, just to get the distance correct for that proper alignment. So from this upper push-up position, your toes are already tucked because the heel is stacked over them. And then from here, you exhale and just send the hips all the way back for that down dog again. So flowing through this, you're going to inhale, rise up to tippy toes, exhale, glide forward to upper push-up position, pause here for a full inhale, and on the exhale, send the hips back, going right back into that down dog. And we're going to do this for a couple more rounds of breath, okay? So on an inhale, you rise up to both tippy toes, exhale, glide forward to that upper push-up position, hold for an inhale, and then exhale, send the hips back. One more time, inhale up to both tippy toes, exhale, glide forward to upper push-up position, Hold for your inhale, draw the belly in, really fire up the abs, and then exhale, send the hips back. Beautiful, so now you're back in your down dog, yeah? Nod that head, yes, shake it no, make little circles, breathe in, and really push through those armpits. Doing that will give you a little bit of extra lift. I never understood what yoga teachers meant when they said get tall in your down dog, because it's you're doing an upside down triangle, it's very... It was awkward for me at first, and I was never really a fan of down dog when I first started practicing, and that was when I was 10. 
<laughs> so if I didn't like being upside down as a kid, like how am I gonna figure it out later? And I finally figured it out like last year. <laughs> so I've been doing yoga my entire life and finally figured out this proper cue. And it really is to push the mat away from you and really extend through the armpits, activating that, really pushing the mat away from you. And to feel that, we're actually gonna come right back down into tabletop. So you're going to lower your knees down. Your knees are stacked under your hips. The tops of the feet are flat against the mat. And then you have your wrist stacked under your shoulders. So you're in this tabletop position, just like we were a couple minutes ago, right? And so in this tabletop to warm the spine up here and to get into that feeling of activating the armpits to get taller in your down dog. That's what we're getting after here. And so hopefully this round of movement, these cat cow spinal movements will get you feeling more of your, your armpit, which there are actually a lot of muscles there and you don't really think about it. So this is a fun way to feel something a little bit different in your shoulder joint. So wrists are stacked under your shoulders, knees under hips, feet are flat against the floor, the tops of the feet. Yes? No tucked feet. So from here, you're gonna inhale, lift the heart and tuck the tailbone up. So you're looking up and then on the exhale, you push the mat away from you, round through the spine, draw the chin into the chest and that's where you're feeling that armpit activation. So to your own breath, continue to flow through this. Inhale and you lift up and tuck the tailbone, looking up. Exhale, push the mat away from you, round through the spine. Continue to do this through your breath. Inhaling to lift and spreading the collarbones of the chest and then exhale, you bring the chin into the chest, round. See how my ribs are coming up? Inhale, lowering the stomach, lift the head. So this is a little bit of a workshop for these cat cows. And hopefully those cues were enough that you can understand that general movement. So now while you're moving that and linking that breath to movement, I'd like you to close your eyes and really begin to feel where you're feeling this in your body. For me, it's really the backs of my shoulder blades, which is all rotator cuff again, which we've already been talking about a lot. Um, which is getting into the armpits as well. So really, really pushing the mat away from you and rounding through the spine. And the more active your hands are and the more active you're pushing the mat and the ground away from you, the more you'll feel that in your shoulder joint, in the top, in the back, and maybe even in the front, in the pecs, depending on how much yard work y'all are doing, right? So a couple more of these cat cows. Inhaling to lift and spread the collarbones, opening the heart. Exhale, pushing and rounding. And then go ahead and come back to that neutral spine. So once again, your gaze is a couple inches above your fingertips. And you're back in this nice neutral tabletop position. Go ahead and tuck those toes, lift the hips, send them on back for down dog. On an inhale, come up to those tippy toes, glide forward to that upper push-up position. Lower both knees down and untuck the toes. So you're in this modified plank position. Your wrists are still stacked under your shoulders. You're still looking out a couple of inches in front of your fingertips. And then when you're ready, we're all going to bend the elbows in toward the side bodies and lower all of the way down to the mat in one piece. Once you arrive, if your toes aren't untucked already, make sure that you untuck them. So your elbows are bent in toward the side bodies. It looks just like this against the mat. You don't want your elbows out, like as if you were doing a push up. We really want them in toward the side bodies, okay? And that's that proper alignment for lowering down. It protects the rotator cuff, actually. I can't tell you the amount of times I have done a class with sloppy, um, they, they're called chaturangas when you get into lowering halfway instead of all of the way, and it is more of a chest workout. But either way, if you're lowering all of the way down or halfway, whatever you're doing, if your shoulders are the slightest bit forward over so your wrists aren't stacked properly, then you're going to really, really strain your rotator cuffs. And I can't tell you the amount of times I've woken up so sore after a yoga class because I wasn't focusing on that proper alignment. So that's definitely a tip from me to you. Definitely making sure that you are looking at where you're stacking those wrists under those shoulders. And then when you begin to lower down to the mat, you're bending the elbows in and keeping the elbow into the side body so that the inner portion of your elbow and your forearm can literally touch your rib cage and side body 
as you lower down to the mat all the way. Okay? So it looks kind of like this. A little bit of like a T-Rex kind of syndrome. <laughs> and so from here, you listen to me yammer about that alignment enough, you're in this nice, maybe your chin's on the mat, maybe your forehead's on the mat, but you're all of the way down on the mat with your toes untucked, legs fully extended. You inhale up for a little baby cobra. It's the smallest little back bend, just lifting the heart up, just peeling it up off of the mat, and then exhale, release. We're going to do that again on the inhale. Press the tops of the feet into the mat. Really fire up the core as you inhale and lift. Harden the core as if someone's taking your picture and you suck it in. That's what we're looking for. And then exhale, release. One more time. Full activation in the legs, pressing the tops of the feet into the mat. You inhale, peel the heart up, exhale, and release. Tuck the toes and send the hips all the way back, coming right back into your down dog. So we're going to do that whole thing again, and I'll challenge you all to do it with your eyes closed so you can really, really feel what's going on in your body as you're going through these movements and linking these breath to, this breath to your movement, okay? So... With eyes closed. Inhale, come up to those tippy toes. Exhale, glide forward to that upper push-up position, stacking the wrists under the shoulders. One full inhale, firing up through the core, and then you exhale, begin to lower down to the mat in one piece, tucking the elbows into the side bodies. Untuck the toes when you arrive. You inhale up, that little baby cobra. Exhale, release. Where were your feet? Were, they, were you pressing them actively into the ground? Inhale, lift up again for that little baby cobra. And then exhale to release. Tuck the toes and then inhale, lift the hips and then send them on back on the exhale, coming back into that down dog. Wonderful. All right. So we did a couple of those nice flow movements. That's what's known as a vinyasa flow. Um, we do that and we rinse that off after we do some more um, intense flows. Um, and different with obviously with m many more different positions or asanas. So we're going to come up to the top of our mat. Now, so you're in this down dog right now. So on an inhale, look between your hands. Exhale, step, walk, or jump, feet to hands. So you're in this nice forward fold at the top of your mat, yeah? One way to get better at a forward fold, because I know that a lot of people want to get their head all the way to their legs, which is a really, really tough thing to do but you can definitely train yourself to get better at that and to get more flexible by backing your hips up against a wall. So imagine there's a wall behind my legs and you just send your hips right back against the wall and that will help with the flexibility that you'll need to eventually get your forehead all the way down to your knees. I can't even do it fully right now, plus I'm not that warm. So from this forward fold, you inhale up for a halfway lift, coming to a nice flat back. So that means that you're looking once again, a little bit farther forward over the, the edge of your mat, and then you exhale to release. One more time, inhaling up for that flat back. Hands can come to the tops of the shins or knees, or they can fly back behind you. And if you choose that flying back action, really send the heart and the head forward away from the hands. You get really, really tall. See, I'm actually getting a little bit of length if you look. And then exhale, release. Inhale, come all the way up, sweep those arms up, and then bring the hands right down to heart center. Go ahead and release those hands. Shimmy it out, shake it out, take your feet wider than hip distance. We'll come into a couple more spinal movements here. Just coming into a couple of twists. And as you do these twists, your hands come right around and just hit your body very gently. <clears throat> and as you turn to one side, the opposite toes come up. Opposite toes. Sit toes. So we're going through this nice movement. Make sure you're breathing. Make the movements a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller and smaller until you're coming right back to that standing position. Bring your feet back in underneath your hip points. Inhale the arms up to frame the head and then exhale. Go ahead and bow forward. So you're back in this forward fold. You inhale up for that halfway lift. Maybe the arms come back behind you and you get tall to the crown of the head and then exhale to release. Plant the hands, step it on back to upper push-up position and begin to hold, breathing in through the core. Pretend you're on the beach and someone attractive is walking by so you suck that core in, right? That's what we're looking for here. So you're in this plank position, your wrists are stacked underneath your shoulders and your heels are stacked over your toes. 
you're holding this upper push-up position. And then on your exhale, your next exhale, go ahead and bend the elbows and toward the side bodies, lower all of the way down, untuck the toes when you arrive, press the tops of the feet into the mat, inhale, peel the heart up, that little baby cobra. Exhale, release, tuck the toes, send the hips right on back, coming in back into your down dog, okay? Hi, Nadia. What's up, Nah? All right, so from this nice down dog that y'all are in now, what I'd like you to do is inhale up to both tippy toes. You're going to lower the heels down to the left. And as you lower the heels down to the left, so what happens is you come up and then you lower the heels over. So the outer edge and the inner arch come to the mat. Lift those hips up a little bit more because they always tend to drop when you do this. Now inhale, lift the heels back up through center and then exhale, lower the heels to the right. Lift those hips up a little bit more. This really gets into the armpit and side body that we were talking about earlier in class. Inhale, back up through center, both heels. And on your exhale, you lower both heels to the earth. A little bit closer, maybe. I know it's always really hard to get those heels close to the earth. Wonderful. All right. On an inhale, look between your hands. Exhale, step, walk, or jump, feet to hands. Hi, Gracie. So you're in this forward fold. You inhale up for that halfway lift, and then exhale, release. Heel toe the feet out past hip distance. We're gonna come into a little bit more of um, linking breath to movement, a little bit more flow here. So your, your feet, the outer edges of your feet are against the outer edges of your mat. And you're in this wide, like a little bit wider, wider legged forward fold, not fully wide though. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend the knees and lower the hips very, very generously, coming all the way down. Take your hands to prayer position and push the elbows into the knees while at the same time pulling the knees in toward the center line and you get nice and tall for that little squat here. Release the fingertips to the mat and inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, lower down all of the way. And you're gonna go through that motion a couple of more times on your breath. So going from that low squatting position, and then you inhale up, lift the hips, extending the legs all of the way. And your fingertips can stay on the ground this entire time as kind of an anchor, right? So then you rebend the knees and lower the hips all the way as far as you can. That's comfortable without causing any pain in your knees. And then inhale, extend, lift the hips back up. This time, bend the knees, lower the hips all of the way and just come right down to seated. Okay, we'll get into some of the backs of the legs because I said that this would be a little bit of a full body stretch routine for you. Nothing too strenuous today. Um, for more of an intense flow class, I teach that on um, Thursdays at 9 a.m. So that's a, a little bit more movement. But this one is really just so I can talk to you about the alignment and the muscles that we're using. For those of you who don't know, uh, this class is called Align. Um, it's something that I created specifically for the balance um, menu, I guess I'll call it. <laughs> um, but it's wonderful for beginners and seasoned yogis alike because we really, really get into the nitty gritty of the anatomy and what's going on in the body when we do this. So <clears throat> we're going to get into a couple of nice passive stretches using gravity. Um, a lot of the movement that we were just doing, especially when you're linking that breath to movement, is called dynamic stretching, um, dynamic active stretching. Um, it's got a couple of different names. So Let's get into some of those passive stretches that allows gravity to just let us kind of hang out, okay? So, legs are extended, feet are nice and flexed, which protects the backs of the knees and the calves. You inhale the arms up to frame the head, and we're going to actually bring your uh, hands down to opposite shoulders, so you're kind of looking like a mummy here. And then you're going to inhale, really, really stay nice and tall, because you probably had to breathe since I started talking. And on your exhale, you're going to bow forward ever so slightly. And the point of doing this, this arm motion here, is to maintain that nice flat back. So going forward instead of rounding through the shoulders, you're staying nice and up, right? Feet are still flexed as if you could put footprints on the wall in front of you. And you're breathing here. For me, I feel this personally a ton in the back of my knees. And if I relax those feet, that feeling goes away. As soon as I activate the feet, 
I instantly feel the back of my knees light up, which is a great indicator that you're giving it a deeper stretch and you're also protecting it at the same time. By keeping those muscles active and making them do the jobs they're supposed to do by staying active, <coughs> it protects your, um, your joints and your muscles from strains and sprains and spasms, cramps. So on an inhale, let's rise back up, stack those shoulders over the hips, release the arms, go ahead and crisscross them the other way. Inhale, get nice and tall, and then exhale, bow forward. <coughs> So you're bowing forward with that nice flat back, looking at your toes. Maybe close your eyes and breathe into these sensations. All right, on an inhale, rise back up. <coughs> Stack the shoulders over the hips. Sorry, I have a hairball. <coughs> wow. All right, so without the arms in that crisscross position, Inhale them up to frame the head, and then exhale, bow forward. Wherever the hands fall, the knees, the shins, the ankles, the toes, wherever is clever. Slowly on an inhale, rise back up, stacking the shoulders over the hips. Go ahead and bring your feet in, bring the soles of the feet to touch. Do a couple of hip works here. So you can actually reach down and grab your toes with your hands, <coughs> interlacing the hands right around your toes. You can rock your knees here for a little bit of extra motion. If that's comfortable for you, if not, and being still is what you need, then you can do that. And we're all going to together inhale, get nice and tall and then exhale. Think about, as you're doing this, don't round through the shoulders and tuck the chin into the chest. I really want you to keep your uh, chin extended up, spread through the collarbones by pulling the toes in toward your trunk, and think about bringing the belly button to the big toe. So you're bending the elbows, pulling, and it could be a very slight motion. You might not even move at all because your hips could be so tight that it, you're, you're feeling it without even having to move, which is absolutely fine. So long as you're feeling this in your outer hips, so kind of like where your hips are seated against the floor, as long as you're feeling it there, and also your inner thighs are probably gonna light up. So that's all we're looking for here, okay? It's not about who can get to, as close down to their toes as possible, that's not the point of this. It's about feeling the bodily sensations. So go ahead and if you would like to, you may close your eyes and breathe here. If you want to bounce your knees here, you can totally do that too. Wherever you are, come back to stillness and inhale, rise back up, releasing the toes. Go ahead and extend your left leg long. Keep the right sole of the foot in against the inner left thigh. Turn your shoulders toward your left extended leg. Inhale the arms up to frame the head and then exhale, bow forward. This is a wonderful pose because it not only gets into the back of the leg, the back of the left extended leg, this long one, but it really, really gets, for me, this is lighting the low quadrant of my lower back up insanely. Like a lot more than I thought it would. So that's always nice. I always feel something different and new in my body too when I take these classes and that's the whole point of this class. So continue to breathe here. If you'd like more of a side body stretch, you can take the right hand to the top of the left ankle, shin, or toes, wherever your hands happen to be. There's always a way for you to get into this. So you're just going to take the hand to wherever, the right hand to the top of the left leg, and then lift the elbow up toward the ceiling and look under the armpit up toward the ceiling at the same time, okay? So it looks like that. Slowly go ahead and release that. And on an inhale, walk the hands back up the leg, stacking the shoulders over the hips. Go ahead and switch this up. So extend the right leg long, bring the left foot into, the left sole of the foot into the right inner thigh. Turn the shoulders toward the right extended leg. 
Inhale the arms up to frame the head. And then exhale, bow forward. So these passive stretches that um, vocab that I just kind of dropped earlier when we when we got to the ground and started stretching our legs, these passive stretches allow gravity to help to get an entire posterior stretch on that side of the body. The anterior is the front side and the posterior is the back side of your body. So that full body posterior stretch is what we're going for here when we have a seated forward fold, which is that's what this is. Um, this one's also called head to toe. Um, but even if this, even if you're um, unilaterally stretching, so that means unilaterally means one at a time, even if you're only doing one side at a time through stretching, you're still getting an entire posterior body stretch by doing these seated passive forward folds. Lots of vocab there. <laughs> so once again, if you would like to get into that side body stretch, you take the left hand to the top of the shin, the knee, or the toes, and then begin to send the left elbow up, and then you look underneath it. And that's what that looks like there. Slowly with control, begin to re-square your shoulders to the ground so you look back down at that shin and leg, and then you inhale, rise back up. Beautiful. Okay, so go ahead and extend both those legs nice and long. Give them a little pitter-patter, maybe a little wind, windshield wiper just to get some blood flow back into the back side of that, of the leg, and, which is hamstring and calf and into the Achilles tendon, stuff like that. So we're going to do a couple of seated twists here. So what you're going to do is leave the left leg long, take the right leg and cross it over, bring the sole of the foot to the ground. If the inner arch peels up and off, that's okay. We're just looking for this nice seated twist here. So every time we twist... It is incredibly important that you lengthen before you twist, and that will prevent any kind of pinching because um, I don't know, if, I don't know if, if you've ever seen a picture of the vertebrae and where our nerves actually run up and down the spine. They're all very, very small spaces. So you have to create space before you twist and compress to avoid injury. So that's why every time we twist, you'll usually hear some kind of a lengthening cue on the inhale. So you inhale the arms up to frame the head here, and as we exhale to twist, you're going to twist to the right. So you're going to take the left elbow to the right knee. And that arm can extend down toward the ground. And behind you, your right fingertips come behind you in a nice tented formation. So kind of like this against the ground. And you can look out over your right shoulder. So you're twisting here. You're breathing very deeply. Every time you inhale, you get a little bit taller. Every time you exhale, you soften the area that you feel the most tension in this pose in, yeah? So for me, that's the back of my left shoulder. One more deep inhale, you get tall through this twist, and then exhale, release and come through. Go ahead and you can assist that leg, so bringing that right leg up off. And then go ahead and re-bend into the left side. So you're going to cross the left leg over the right extended leg. Make sure that right ex uh, extended ankle is nice and flexed. You're going to inhale up to frame the head with both arms. And then exhale to the left. So you're going to take the right elbow to the outside or the top of the left knee, wherever it lands. And then the left hand comes behind you and you twist here. And every time you inhale, you get a little taller. Every time you exhale, maybe soften the shoulders or the low back, wherever you're feeling the tightness in this twist. One more deep inhale, get nice and tall. And then exhale, come back through center. Go ahead and assist that left leg, uncross it from the right extended leg. Extend both legs out long in front of you. On an inhale, bring both arms up so they're parallel with the legs. We're going to get into a little bit of core work here. You're going to take your sweet time. So on every exhale, you get a little bit lower, and then you inhale and hold, really activating that core. Exhale, get a little lower, inhale and hold. And you're going to do that all the way down. Both feet are flexed, and that will actually help you here. If your feet are relaxed and not flexed, you'll, it's, it makes this whole 
this whole thing harder. So once again, arms are up, parallel over the legs. You're scooping out the belly, rounding through the tail, and lowering down. So on every exhale, you get a little bit lower, and then you pause and hold on the inhale, activate that core, maybe get a little taller through the chest, and then exhale a little bit lower. Inhale and hold. Exhale a little bit lower. And then finally, once you've reached the ground, that should definitely make you either shake or sweat or both. It definitely always makes me shake for sure. And sweat. <laughs> you sometimes swear too. <laughs> So once you finally reach the ground, your shoulders reach the earth, you can inhale those arms up overhead, point the toes forward, full body stretch, and then exhale, bring the arms down along the sides. On your next inhale, bring the knees into the chest. Place your fingertips on the tops of your knees. Maybe bring your forehead as close as you can to your knees to make a little ball. Roll around side to side, massaging your low back and your sacrum, your SI joints. Wonderful. If you need anything else at this time to complete your practice, you may do so, like a happy baby or a shoulder stand. If those are in your practice, then please feel free to do so. If not, let's go ahead and extend the legs down long. The arms come down along your sides. The feet splay open. I'll be giving you a brief Shavasana before we get into the meditation portion of the class this evening. In your Shavasana right now, this is a period of silence where you just let your body absorb the practice that we just did together. So, <clears throat> check in with the jaw. Bring the tip of the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. On your next exhale, relax the space between the eyes. When we're done with this Shavasana, I will bring you out of it with my voice. And until then... Enjoy the silence.
For those of you who are laying down in Shavasana, I invite you to open your eyes if they aren't already, gently fluttering them open, bringing your room back, bringing the attention back to the room and back to your limbs by wiggling your toes and fingers. If you would like to sit up for the last few minutes of meditation, you may. If you would like to remain laying down, you may absolutely do that as well. That's your choice. Uh, for those of you who would like to come up to a seated position, roll over to your right side, pause there for a moment, and then when you're ready, you can push yourself up to a seated position. If you need to get a uh, pillow, bolster, or block, some kind of prop to put underneath your hips to help you sit up straight, go ahead and grab that now. If your legs are crisscrossed, that's fine. Your hands can come to your knees. If you're kneeling, they can come to the tops of the thighs or the knees, or you can always bring your hands to heart center, pressing the thumbs into that heart space. Coming into this practice of meditation for the evening, um, we added this to a line kind of given the circumstances because I think that uh, in everyone at Balance, um, has their own personal meditation practice because it is just that. It is a practice. It is not something that you try once, find out you're not good at, and then abandon. It is a dedicated thing that you must dedicate time to on a daily basis or every day whenever you have time to be able to sit with the anxiety and the thoughts and the constant stream of consciousness that is our two hemispheres. That chatter of the mind is ever-present, now more than ever. So it's important to be able to, to sit with it, not pass judgment, not get worried that we're anxious and that maybe we aren't doing as much as we should, or there could be you know, hundreds of things that you're being anxious about and that, you're, that your mind is just swirling inwards on. And that is what meditation is here to help you with. In time, it shrinks physically, physically shrinks the portion of the brain called the amygdala, which is the center for flight or fight. So it's our fear center. So being able to sit in the stillness is a practice that I offer to you all now. Focus on your breath. Focus on your bodily sensations. If you need to shift your arms to a different position or lay down or move your legs, please be comfortable. Sit tall and breathe. Check in with the jaw, bring the tip of the tongue away from the roof of your mouth, and on your next exhale, relax the space between your eyes. Notice your breath in, and notice your breath out. Pay attention to the sounds around you. Notice them. Don't perseverate on them. Don't dwell on them. Just let them pass. Notice your body sitting up tall. Soften the skin on the shoulders.
If the mind has wandered, bring it back to breath, to bodily sensations, and to the sounds around you. every inhale at the belly fills, with every exhale, breathe out through the nose. If you are laying down or if you are seated upright, wherever you are right now, bring one hand to your stomach and one hand to your heart. Together, take a breath in and a long sigh out the mouth. One more time, nice and audible. Inhale deep. Exhale out the mouth. Feel your heart beat under your hand. Feel the belly lift and fall. Thank you so much for joining me this evening for Align and Meditate. I teach again Thursday at 9 a.m. for a flow class. I hope to see you all on the internet <laughs> very soon. If not, I'll see you on Thursday. You never know when I'll do a pop-up set of music too, so keep your eye out for that. The light and the truth in me sees that and honors it in each of you. Namaste, everyone.